guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Trinity Sierra here. And, uh, all right, no, 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 you do it. You're better. You're better. <laughs> hey guys, long time coming. And I just want to say welcome back to the channel. Me and Troy haven't done an official video like this in a very long time. Sorry. Yeah, it's, we've been busy. But we are back today because we're going to be talking about our birth vlog story. Guys, this this whole thing was so crazy that we literally did not capture any footage, which is the only reason why we have to talk about this today. I want to just sit back, relax, and let Trey talk, and then I'll chime in when I chime in. All right, this one was, uh, it was a wild one for sure. The entire birth process for us was a lot longer than it has been pretty much for any birth process because the week before Noah's due date, um, Trinity started feeling contractions on a Monday mm -hmm. and uh, usually she feels contractions we go we stay we figure out you know we're like yeah. five centimeters we're, we can't go back home right so that's that's usually how it's been so we went to the hospital this time um, and uh, went through the process we're excited because like this could mean we, we get to meet our son tonight or in the morning mm -hmm. and um, we get there and they go through their routine and their process and Trinity's still feeling it, but I think it was different Yeah. as far as the pain level. It wasn't a lot. She was still walking around doing a lot of stuff. So she's feeling the contractions. Um, we get into the hospital in the bed and they check her and they say, hey, you're three centimeters. We'll watch you to see if anything happens. So, okay, cool. What's happened before? Mm -hmm. We go to three, we go to four and a half, we go to six, we go to eight. We, you know, the normal process. Mm -hmm. They came back in an hour and they said, hey, like, you're still like three centimeters. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, okay, um, so what does that mean? And they were like, well, you can stay another hour or two and we'll watch it or you can go home. I said, okay, let's go ahead and go home because there's no point in staying here. Nothing's changed. We've already been here for an hour and I don't want to be here. I didn't want him to come early. I just never felt that before, and so I just rather be safe than sorry, you understand? Um, and we actually have footage of that, so I'll show like this little clip. Yeah, so September 20, or August 28th, we're here. We don't know what's gonna happen. We might get sent home. I'm so done. But we're here just to get checked. She's having contractions, so. Freddie, you can talk without the mask. Let's see, I like it like this, though. Anyways. So we don't know what's going to happen, but we'll see. Look how beautiful she looks. Hey, Look at that. Ooh, <laughs> don't spin around. Let me see the bump. Let me see the bump. Ooh. <laughs> Last baby. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, we'll let y'all know. Yeah. Anything you want to say? How you feel? Um, I feel good right now. So we'll see. I'm keeping it. Fingers crossed. We'll we might see be going what home. happens. So we'll see. And so yeah, you can pretty much see Trey did not want to be, even be there, and he was like, "We're going home. He's not due today." I just knew it wasn't September. All of this. And I just felt that it wasn't. We were gonna have an August baby. Nothing wrong with August babies. <laughs> I just knew that we weren't gonna have one. So we go home. Mm -hmm. Trinity continues to have those those pains for the next like, couple of days. They call um, it prodromal, prodromal, paradormal, or prodromal labors when you start feeling. Um, false labor is what they call it, but it's not exactly like Braxton Hicks. It's like you really are feeling like labor symptoms. Well, the other thing was is that they put her, they hooked her to the machine and she was having contractions. They just weren't close together. So it was contractions. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't um, as close as they need to be for active labor. So that's why they yeah. called it the false labor or just pre-labor. Uh, mm -hmm. How did you feel when we went home the first time? <sighs> I don't really know. I think the first time I was a little bit at ease. Um, I was just honestly feeling kind of afraid of the unknown because I was like, okay, great, this is already different and I've never been sent home. This is my fourth child. And so it, it to me felt kind of foreign. And I was like, I don't know what to expect because now I have no idea when I'm going to feel the real thing. And then what does the real thing look like? Like what is, mm -hmm. I can imagine how that could have been like worrisome 
-hmm. even though I was just happy he wasn't born on in August. But we go through a couple of days. Now, mind you, I'm taking off work. Like mm -hmm. I'm home because you don't know what could happen. Labor can kick in, like 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 they were telling us at the hospital. Labor can kick in and your body just goes, and you don't like. There is no wait time, wait. especially it's with the fourth happens. kid. It right. can just it can go. So. Um, we let a day go past and I think it was kind of subsiding a little bit then on Wednesday mm -hmm. she was feeling it again um, and they were a little bit closer together we were trying to do what they say hey count your minutes and mm -hmm. how long if it lasts an hour we were trying to do all the steps and I ended um, up calling the nurse hotline because I was trying not to go back mm -hmm. and so Trinity calls the nurse hotline and so they said hey you gotta come in you're almost 30 weeks you're 30 30 39 weeks i'm sorry you're almost 30 you're weeks. almost 39 <laughs> weeks and they were like you're 38 in five days so just mm -hmm. come in because it could it could be the real thing so we pack our bags matter of fact our bags are still in the car for mm -hmm. monday so we go ahead and uh we pack our bags and we go ahead to the hospital um and we get out we go through the routine we have been there before like a day or two prior so we knew what to do we kind of went through the routine and they they checked her again and she was three centimeters. Still. Still. And so um, at that point it was like, wow, okay, really? Mm -hmm. And uh, since we kind of already felt like we've been through this, three centimeters doesn't change, whatever, mm -hmm. um, they asked us if we wanted to go home almost immediately and, you know, that was the move. Yeah, I so said, let's go home because this is a, not a waste of time, but in my head, this is a waste of time and it's. For me, it's better to check than to not. Right. So we went back home and it's now, as the day progresses and the week has progressed, um, it's like Saturday night and we spent the whole day, um, Saturday, we're getting ready for Luke's party, his birthday, right? I didn't want to have a party because this entire year I've known that the baby was coming, his due date was September 8th. So I was like, there's no point in having a party because he'd come on his birthday and then boom, I'm going to be really sick because you spent all this money for your son's birthday. You can't even celebrate or have fun. And you know, you can't cancel vendors. You can't get refunds. Like there was no way that I was having a party. Right. So Saturday, we spent the day getting ready. Trinity had a really strong nesting experience this time um, where we were doing projects like mm -hmm. crazy. Uh, so if you follow us on, on social media or anything like that, you saw like, hey, stuff is changing. And there's a lot that you guys haven't even seen that we've done or that yeah. we've started. And so um, uh, we're doing projects and I even got video of her like under the snooze. She's trying to hook things up. She, it's late at night, our kids are sleeping and she's in the hallway painting walls. I'm like, bro, the baby's due next week and you're, you're out here doing this. So she was, she was the determined. The baby was due in a few days. She so. was determined family was already here because we were getting ready the next day's labor day right. so we were getting ready and my brother was actually running errands with me trey was setting up outside in the garage and we were doing a whole bunch of things so trey i took a nap and i was like hey trey like i really need you to just come because i kind of want you to like drive around i'm feeling contractions and this time it's not like false labor it feels like it's like contracting from my uterus and um, I said they're intense, but it's not too bad. During that day, I didn't really feel anything um, as terms as I need to go to the hospital. And I didn't think the baby was gonna come on Luca's birthday. Well, I didn't think it was gonna be that early. <laughs> so my mom kept like saying I wanted to come, make it to midnight for Luca's birthday so they could have the same birthday. And I was just thinking, let's get to the morning where I can say, wow, I got through the night, you know? I was just thinking, let's get through the morning. So when we got back home after doing all those errands, my body was really just hurting. I was just pain, in pain. It wasn't like in pain from contractions or labor. It was really just like my, my body was aching, my body was sore. I was like, I really just need to hop in the bath because I just cannot do anything else. And it could have been from the week of just doing projects, but I felt it. So Trey was like, okay, I'm going to go downstairs. Me and Chelsea are going to play and I'll bring you a bath. So I got in the bath and I still felt contractions, but they were no, they were not close at all. But it was starting to intensify. And I was like, okay, these are really, really hurting. But it was not even two minutes apart. It was like in an hour, I probably felt a total of three contractions, like big. 
and that's not close that's not warrant to go to the hospital so I was just like okay you know um, by the time I finished my show I got out it was 11 o'clock and I was like okay as soon as I stood up at towards the end of the bath like my contraction started to really amplify so I went got towel dried off laid down on the bed and I got to the bed and it's like okay you know this is this is very intense you know and I'm breathing through it I, was, I remember the nurse was like if you're breathing through it that means you got to come come in like it's time so I was like okay and by the time I got up I really was like oh my god oh my god no water has broken the contractions are very intense right now like I'm breathing and struggling to breathe and I immediately said Trey I said we gotta go right now and Trey is like okay you know and um but still he was still trying to pack a few things I don't even think you had did you have clothes at that moment no yeah everything was in the car no, you had some things in the dryer that you were still trying to throw back into your duffel bag. That was earlier in the week. I don't know. We didn't win. We were ready. Time, we were, but we yeah, weren't. We, were ready we weren't because I was waiting for you. You were running but around. But I had to. I think I. Oh, I took stuff out of my bag. Exactly. Uh, I did take like toothbrush, stuff like and that. And I'm like telling Trey, we gotta go bag. now. I don't have no clothes on. I'm telling him, we have to yeah. go. Come help me put these clothes on because I couldn't even move. I was like paralyzed. Yeah. So I go upstairs and I see her and as one came, she had to stop and she couldn't even like move. So I was like, okay, this is serious. So I, I, you know, I'm running around the house trying to make sure we have everything, make sure we don't forget anything. Now granted, the hospital is only like 15 minutes away from the house or whatever. 17. 17, but it, 17 it's minutes. not far. Yeah. So I was like, man, if we forget something, it's not the end of the world, but let's just try to make sure we have everything. So she's like, we need to go. We need to go. So I was like, okay. Because I told him, I said, we we don't have any But time. it's so funny because I'm the one who was trying to get stuff. But as we're running out the door, she asked me, hey, do you have my camera? Mm -hmm. I said, camera? No, I don't have your camera. We got to go now. She said, go get my camera bag, get my camera, get my purse. And obviously I need purse. my purse for my that ID and my insurance, and I, I needed the camera I because said, I needed to get his pictures. Good, get my vlog camera. Get my. I said, man, let's forget all of that. Let's just go to the hospital because this baby's coming right now. After this guy was running around for like 15 minutes you know, grabbing stuff for his bag. You know, we don't we don't want to talk about that. I get the stuff. We get in the car, and she has she has a contraction as we're pulling out of the driveway, and like she's going like in utter pain so mm -hmm. I, I was i was telling the family like as a husband as a husbands were fixers we 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 like we want to help we don't like to do a lot but we'll solve mm -hmm. problems uh, we don't always want to talk about how we're going to do it we just like to do it and get to it there's a problem okay let's just do it yeah and so with this like she was in a lot of pain and i couldn't do anything about it like there was nothing I could do, I couldn't help with the pain, I couldn't take any, anything away. I knew she was going to get an epidural like she's had three times before, so I was <laughs> like, let's just get her to the hospital. The only thing I can do right now is get her to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So that 17 minute drive was like 11, 10 minutes. And this entire time, like as he's driving, I feel this enormous pressure to push. And I was like, the baby is gonna come out, like we waited too late, this is going to be absolutely terrible because I can't get an epidural, but I just have to push. Like, and it, it it's so much so. Like, if we were at the hospital, I probably would have pushed one time and we've been done, and I probably wouldn't have felt that pain ever again. But because I'm trying to wait, we already went twice. I'm trying to wait for the contractions to be close together. Like I said, I'm trying to wait for my water to break. Hasn't broke. It was like there's no way I I would be feeling this right now. It doesn't even make sense because. There are no labor warnings. There were no signs. There were no symptoms that they said to watch for. Mm -hmm. And this is my fourth kid. To the hospital. Trinity's having contractions in the parking lot. And this is where it becomes for me. It's like it was. It was like a movie. We get we get out the car. And she's like, wait, wait, wait. She's having contractions. We had to wait for a contraction to be over before we could even walk to the to the entrance of the emergency room. And the entrance was so far that the I was having another contraction as we were walking, but I just had to get to the door. So we get to the door. I mean, I nobody was there because it's like. 
12 in the morning or something like that, 12 a.m. So we get to the door, she goes and sits down. I'm telling the lady, hey, she, they're like, oh, they can see it. Is she having contractions? Yes. So we go ahead. <laughs> no, because they stopped and said, hey, hey, wait, where are you going? You have to check in right here. I kept walking. Yes, Trinity went and sat down by the door. We knew because we had already done this tw twice, twice this week. <laughs> so we already knew where to go. So. I mean, I said, hey, we need to go ahead and we need to hurry this up because she's having like intense contractions. And they're like, oh, okay. They didn't even have time to put me in the system. Because I just... literally while Trey was, they were taking forever. Yeah, it was and a while. So while they were taking forever, I just had the, I needed to push. And it was so uncomfortable. Um, and it hurt so bad that the only thing that kind of relieved it was pushing, but it still wasn't because it was, I was in pain. Yeah. So Trinity goes into the bathroom while I'm talking to the lady. I had to give her ID, all this stuff. She's asking for all this thing, but she couldn't even put it in the system. She had to write it down on a piece of paper be, and put it in later because we have to go. <laughs> so they're like, okay, cool. Does she need a wheelchair? I said, Trinity, we asked her. She said, no, I don't need a wheelchair. We're walking down the hallway to go to the elevator. If we're on the first floor. We need to go to the second. <laughs> Trinity just literally just busts off to the side. and She's like, I need to go to the bathroom and runs in the bathroom and gets on the toilet the, and like, I'm standing there in the hallway like, wait, what? The lady comes around the corner right as Trinity went in the bathroom. She's like, hey, where'd she go? I said, oh, she's in the bathroom. They said, oh, no, 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 no. That's the baby, that's the baby. So we both rush into the women's bathroom. She grabs a wheelchair, pulls the wheelchair in. Trinity's on the toilet like, I just have to push. I just have to push. And she's I mean, screaming at every contraction. And I used to think like people see that, like you see that in the movies and stuff. I was like, man, this I is I don't dramatic. think I was screaming at that point. You were screaming. No. I said, man, matter. this is dramatic. Like, I just feel like it's not really like that with an epidural or whatever. Like people really don't really go through that. Yes, they do. And I got to see it firsthand. So. <laughs> Um, we put her on the, she put, you know, we put her on the, uh, wheelchair, put her in a wheelchair. I roll her out. I run to the elevator. They had the elevator waiting. I get on the elevator, go up to the second floor. As soon as I got to the second floor, pretty much they took her. They told that that lady, so she was a black elder lady and she was really sweet, but she was just like, uh, -uh I got to take her straight. Cause she already knew, I think yeah. she'd been through this before. She was like, she gotta go straight to labor and delivery because they usually do the triage to see how you are. And she was like, uh, like the way she's acting, she gotta go to labor and delivery. She says, sir, just check in. I'll take your wife, don't worry about it. Just do what you need to do. So I check in, um, when I come in, they already had her in the room, on the bed, whatever, and there's like- And I was like, I gotta go to the bathroom because what they did is like, what made me so sick about this time um, even labor delivery, Trey was still checking in, but they're, they're trying to talk to me and I'm like, the baby's freaking coming out. I'm not trying to talk at this point. We need to just push this baby out. You understand? And so she was like, no, like we have to check your thing. You, we have to check you, hook you up. And all. I said, we don't have time. I said, you know what? I'm going to just go to the bathroom because the only thing I knew I had to do was push and they're trying to talk. And so I'm trying to maintain, you know, I'm trying to be the good Christian woman, but I understand why people really be getting violent because it's just like, this is a very scary situation for mom and baby. And you're trying to talk through like, I'm not about to have this baby. And right. that's what was so like, oh, about right. that moment. So that continued, that didn't stop. They continued to come in and uh, they're telling her to breathe through it and just hold it and not to And I was it. screaming. They were yeah. like, well, what do we need to do? We need to get her uh, like a gown and whatever one. I mean, and I was screaming at Trey, but I think I screamed at everyone. Cause like, well, just help me take my shoes off. Cause I mean, I need to get my pants off. We didn't have time. We got crazy. there because we were waiting crazy. downstairs. And then by the time we got to the room, like within listen, 15 listen, minutes, it was crazy. The baby was here. So, we're upstairs, all this happened quick. We're upstairs, nurses coming in and out. They're trying to jab Trinity, get her blood. Hey, what, what's your blood type? Right. What's your this? We need to get that. They're she like, can't even answer. Did you, yeah. did you come back negative at this? What was your test result? I'm in so much pain. They couldn't even. That I couldn't even open my eyes. They couldn't even put the, the, the monitors on her. So they, one nurse had to hold it. Come to find out, pretty much every nurse in there, all eight of them were residents. We didn't find that out. So Trey just be saying they're stuff. residents. So yeah. anyway, maybe not all of them, but majority of them were residents. So they were yeah. doing the the general stuff, but they're pricking her arms. Oh, this I can't get a can't get anything on this side. I can't get an IV on this. Side. So she's all this is happening. Times. 
while she's still having contractions, she's screaming at the top of her lungs. And let's go back to husbands being fixers. Like you can't do anything. So I'm literally standing there. I had to sit down because I thought I was going to pass out. So then they then they said <clears throat> then they said the doctor's on the way. So that alluded to the fact that he's not here. But they said he was down the hall. Anyway, doctor comes in. It's not the real doctor. And they're just uh, like, oh, we'll push. He was as taking needed. his time. He was taking his time. And they're just saying, okay, just breathe through, push when you need to. Well, when they said that, Trinity pushed one the next time. And we didn't even say this part, but when they checked her when she was on the oh, bed yeah. in between contractions, they So said, that was the part. I said, I needed to go to the bathroom. She said, no, we have to check you first. I said, the baby is coming out. So either I'm going to go to the bathroom or you, we're going to push the baby out. But they, I get it. They need to go through their medical thing. But I'm telling them, the baby is coming out. Like, I feel it she said hey i can't i can't figure it out i can't get because actually her water bag is bulging out so i can't get around it i need a second opinion because i can't tell so then we got this the second opinion came and the lady was looking at they were both kind of looking at each other and she checked and she was like okay i'm getting around it okay i'm getting around the bag oh oh she's 10 centimeters oh yeah yeah okay it's time to push she's complete and I was like, so at that moment, Trey keeps laughing at this point because he knows I wanted an epidural. And at that moment, I'm completely like, oh my God, I'm doing this 100% natural. I don't know what I'm about to feel like. I don't know how this is gonna feel. Like, I didn't know what to do. At that point, I was like, oh shoot, we doing this. That's the part where it kind of got real. <laughs> Um, because there was no epidural, Trinity said, I really wanted the epidural on that. There was just no time. Mm -hmm. So she, uh, so fast forward to the doctors coming in, people are in and out. Like, there's like it's eight to ten bathroom. people are in the room. Mm -hmm. We're trying to figure out what's going on. And they said, push as needed. And she pushed, and the water bag popped like a. Yeah, like a, it was. Like somebody threw a water bomb at us. It yeah. was everywhere. And I felt it because I don't have an epidural. I can feel everything. So. And as soon she as it pushed popped. and screamed, so you didn't hear it, but she, she screamed and, and it, you know, it popped. So then we're all like, everybody, everybody in the room was like, Where's the doctor Lee? We need the doctor now. <laughs> we need the doctor now. So they're all screaming, go get Dr. Lee, go get Dr. Lee. They're making jokes like, man, he should be here any second. He lives, he lives in his car. He lives in his car. He's always here. He's always here. Yeah. Dr. Lee comes in. The room kind of settles. He says, hey, I'm Dr. Lee. Mm -hmm. He said, okay, let's go ahead. Put her legs up. He said, okay, push on the next contraction. And she pushed on the next contraction and Noah's head came out. But I think because of the immense pain and probably uncomfort and discomfort. Like mm -hmm. she started like closing her legs and she was turning like, and just dealing with the pain. And doctor was like, no, 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 like get her, hold her, like make sure she's still, make sure she's still. And Trinity heard it. So she kind of like mm -hmm. let us get her legs, whatever. And Noah's head was pretty much out. I mean, mm -hmm. he was here. So he grabbed him and you know, did this little spin or whatever and got him out. And uh, as soon as he pulled him out, he basically just, <laughs> Like put him, <laughs> put him straight on Trinity's deck. I don't even think she saw him until like an hour or so later. But I was she, like, what does he, he look was just like? tucked up there. on her he deck. He was screaming he as soon as he came out. He was yelling. He was he was upset. And so uh, he came out screaming, which is good though. You want to hear him cry. Mm -hmm. um, and then everybody's like, congratulations, girl. Are you strong? Are you strong? I mean, everybody's giving all Everyone's their congratulations. <laughs> but I'm sitting there like. I mean, I was overstimulated. Dads, new dads, you know, <laughs> soon to be dads, whatever. Like, man, I was, that was where I was like, okay, this is, this is heavy. Like, mm -hmm. This is a different, different feeling. Yeah. Um, and then we got to, uh, we got to spend some quality time with Noah um, before everything started coming in. And it's our fourth kid, so we knew a lot of what to do. But mm -hmm. um, it was just so like, You'd almost think somebody could say like, cut, mm -hmm. hey, okay, scene. Mm -hmm. Like it was so powerful. It was strong. It was so many strong emotions in the room. It was just so much going on, and and uh, 
I felt like a movie. Now that I look back, it really felt like a movie because like this is what I want to say real quick. Um, because in the moment you don't realize it, but then afterwards I was like, wow, that was a supernatural birth because in reality, I didn't feel a single thing and I thought I was feeling stuff and I was like, maybe I'm having contractions, but usually you know and you, you can get to the hospital. I just got off the bath and then out of nowhere, it was, it was intense because he was supposed to be born and be delivered and but other than that I would have never I would have never actually known and that's the part that is so beautiful about all of it I was like wow like God was really through it all because I wasn't trying to be natural I'm not one of those women hey kudos to y'all but I'm an epidural girl um and I'd be getting epidural four centimeters and be close to yeah. <laughs> but yeah. this time like me and Trey were both like stuck and it was like, through it all, um, I don't know about anyone else, but I always have labor feel, fears and I pray through it each time. But this time there was no point in even being fearful of anything because now I just know I need to get him out safely, yeah. period. And so even though it was like a big deal for us and it was very kind of honestly scary, yeah. um, I'm glad everything happened the way it happened because it gave us a new experience that I would have never been strong enough to do on my own. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> so I'm glad that I didn't feel anything. I'm glad we made it to the hospital. I'm glad it happened the way it happened because I gave a new opportunity to so many residents and nurses that never experienced that before. And I think we all like got something new that day. Yeah. And so sometimes you have it planned out of exactly how it's going to go. And I think for us, like, everyone has been different. Mm -hmm. Everyone has been unique. There's a, exactly. <laughs> there's a story for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you never know how it's going to go. So just enjoy the process. I don't know if you guys, whoever's watching this, may be um, pregnant right now or, or about to be or want to be or whatever. But, like, it might not go exactly how you planned it, but it's always going to go exactly how God intended it to. And so just use, like, just enjoy the moment, enjoy the process. Mm -hmm. um, I knew he wasn't coming in August, so I was <laughs> happy about that. So, um, and then him and Luca actually have the exact same birthday. So now him and Luca share a birthday forever, and I think that's mm -hmm. how it was always intended to be. So uh, that's our crazy, crazy fourth birth story. Mm -hmm. um, we hope you guys enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions or if, you know, how was your birth story? Did you experience something similar? When we shared it on social media, a lot of people said that, that they had similar experiences or, um, you know, if you're planning to, what's your plan? Mm -hmm. uh, let us know in the comments. We definitely want to hear about it and let us know if you have any other questions that you want us to discuss or go over because when you're talking to a camera without doing a QA, and a you really are just like going from memory. Um, so let us know what you want to hear. If you want to see more stuff, I'll try to add some footage in from Labor and Delivery, yeah. what we have. Not too much, but guys, if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. It helps so much with our channel. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. What's up, y'all? It's been an eventful night. Been an eventful night. Um, I don't even think we could document everything because of how quickly it happened. But uh, yeah. came to the hospital last night. We'll tell you guys the story later. Came to the hospital last I night. Somebody started telling the story. Hmm? I said I already said I started telling the story. Uh, well. <laughs> well, we're here. We made it to our official room host baby and so hanging out he's doing good so uh i'll keep you guys updated lucas uh and the girls are coming here in a little bit so we get to see them and mm -hmm. we'll capture their reaction to the baby for the first time and so yeah. uh yeah we're excited to show you guys what's kind of been going on and <laughs> where we're going from here we'll see you soon Da 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 da
And so, uh, going into his second year, um, I'm going to pray over Luca. Um, I want to speak over Luca. Um, the toddler. Hey, buddy. I don't want to wake him up. Okay, we'll, we'll see him when he wakes up. <laughs> What do you think he looks like? Can you say baby? Baby. Yeah. This is your baby brother. Just go in front of me, but I thought it was 